Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's City Galax, and today we're talking Katie, the underdog from the Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings update. And we're also talking about some data mines slash possible item leaks. So let's jump into the leaks first just to get out of the way. And then we'll talk about why Katie is an excellent free to play character that you should build up if you are a new to mid level or returning player, but not very handy for late game players, late game uh, veterans. So we have the data mined rewards, the, the possible rewards, the possible things that you can purchase in the shops in the timeline survival. Now, threat one, threat level one and threat level two are not very interesting, but it does start to get interesting in threat level three. Now, keep in mind the temporal energy is always the same. Like you have, you can purchase up to 15 for 30 coins in threat level one, but it's really in threat level three where things start to get spicy because that's where you can get the tier three materials, which is why I said rush to threat level three as fast as possible. You don't want to purchase these for crystals. The return is terrible. It's a 10 X like it's 10 times the cost. It's really, really bad. But the ones for survival are not bad at all. And the price actually gets better as you go up. So you want to save up tokens and then buy the highest level one. You can get 25 TCP or EOD. You can get up to 30 CCF, which is not bad. Like you could, you could theoretically get 30 CCF a day this way, uh, which is great. And then you can get 35 Awakening Crystals or 35 um, Mandalay Gems. It's cut off at the bottom here, but you can get up to 35. 35 is really good. You could honestly get almost 35 a day, I think, on average with a little bit of luck and a decent chunk of time playing and sort of hunting for shops. But yeah, even every other day means a net average of an extra 100 per week, which is an extra 400 per month, which is half of what you need to transcend a character. So all of that for free, plus the possibility of getting much, much more if you happen to get lucky with the shops. But these data mines are not that spicy. What's way, 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 way spicier is this thing right here that we threw up in the thumbnail to get you clicking on the video, a premium card selector. Yes. That's exactly what it looks like, the the, the holy, the hallowed uh, gem that we've never seen in the game until possibly very soon. So this is not in the game right now, like it's in the game files, but it's not in the game. So if you're going to log in scrambling, looking for whatever pack or deal or login event gives you this selector, I have bad news for you. It doesn't exist. However, hopefully it will exist soon because a premium card selector is awesome. If you don't know what a premium card selector would be, it would be a selector like a CTP selector that would allow you to choose a premium card of your choice. This is especially strong for free to play and low spending players, even the veterans, because even if you play this game and you're dedicated, you can get unlucky with the free sort of monthly, not quite monthly, um, but the chest, the dimension chest that you get to open and you can get unlucky and you can pull the same rotation of cards. You could, you could continuously pull this middle rotation with Black Widow, Loki, Loki, Black Panther, Black Panther. And honestly, 166 Black Panther is a great card, but the other four, not so good unless you're building a PVP deck for um, something like Black Widow 10. So having a premium card selector that will allow you to just, you know, pick up that elusive card. I spent hundreds of dollars hunting for the Luna Snow card, for example. That premium card selector would have solved my problems. Or maybe you're hunting for the Baby Spidey card. Or maybe you're hunting for New Avengers 9 for PvP. Whatever the case may be, right? Now, knowing that this is uh, in the works on some level means that we could be seeing new premium cards out there. So one thing you could do to sort of prepare for that is to just farm GBR. Farm GBR for the premium tokens and farm GBR for the crafting cubes because if they introduce a new card, or whatever, or they put something extra special in the premium card selector, you're going to want those card crafting cubes to get started and get sort of a head start. But it doesn't end there. If you notice the text under here, it doesn't explain itself quite well, but basically it's saying that the current updates crafting event is scheduled to end the 13th of October, which the data miner is speculating that is likely the day of the October update. So we could potentially already know almost a, basically a month in advance when the next update is. And the 13th of October is when the update would be live, like two in the morning on October 13th. That is a Wednesday. So that does line up perfectly. That's correct. What's also interesting is if we have another uh, crafting event, we don't have one on right now, but remember the crafting event only lasted two weeks. So it's very possible that in about a week and a half from now, we could be... <laughs> In a week and a half from now on the um, 21st, well, it's actually not a week. Yeah, about a week and a half from now. Yeah, I'm right. On the, the 21st or the 22nd, 
we could see a two week um, event come up, uh, pop up for that. Actually, it wouldn't be the 20, it would be the 28th. Depending if the update, depending if the uh, token of the crafting event is two weeks or three weeks, I can't exactly remember. It feels like it was longer than two weeks, but yeah, you sort of get what I'm saying. So right around the time of the mid month update, we may be seeing a new crafting event. Now, whether that means we're going to be getting another CTP that is um, reforgeable like we did for authority, I don't know. But another piece of advice for you guys is save your CCF because CCF was one of the main components of the crafting event, especially if you're going for the CTPs and that sort of thing. So you could I mean, you might be holding your CCF anyways, because there's the possibility that, you know, Luna, Sharon, Crescent's new uni, if they're getting them, are going to be amazing. Maybe you just really want a tier three white fox. Maybe you want a tier three multiple characters. Like, there could be a huge meta shift coming in about uh, two weeks, less than two weeks, with the possibility of this white Cyrus or whatever it's called armor for the, the original characters, Sharon, Luna, Crescent, and then uh, the white fox tier three. So there's, there's huge reasons already to save your CCF, on top of the fact that we may be getting a crafting event. So that's another reason to save your CCF. Keep your eyes peeled, keep it locked on the channel here, make sure you're subbed, and uh, I'll get you uh, up to date on all that information as soon as it is live. So yeah, with the data mine leak stuff out of the way, let's jump into this Katie, uh, wait, Katie carousel? I don't know what you wanna call it. It's sort of like a Katie showcase, but not exactly. Uh, here's the build, fairly straightforward. The details page shows that she's pretty much capped on all of the relevant stats. You can soft cap her crit rate because she has a frenzy buff, I believe, 15%. So you can soft cap her crit rate at 60%, which is pretty high, but it's better than having to go all the way to 75. Now, mainly, I think a lot of veterans are just going to use her for her Shang-Chi leadership, which honestly isn't even that good. The 60% all tech is nice. But for some content, you might just want to give him a different type of leadership altogether. And you can still give him a 60% leadership with Crescent. Uh, and you can give him a 55% leadership with uh, Gladiator. You can give him a 50% leadership with crit damage and some guaranteed crit rate with Beast. So, yeah, I, a lot of, honestly, a lot of veterans and a lot of endgame players are not really going to be building Katie very much, I think. Um, but the good news is for returning players, for new players and for intermediate players, she is fantastic very very easy to play very very safe and high damage which is which is a bonus so we're going to check her out here we're actually going to compare her to a character that i want to make another video on later Swordmaster, which is pretty cool but yeah she's got a 180 proc with nothing else on it because she doesn't have cold damage we're just going to take her into some content here i've already featured her damage uh as far as what she can do against um oh there she is what she can do against stage 99 Proxima, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm actually not sure if Katie has the leadership tag. She does not. So she's not gonna benefit as much from White Fox. Like she's not gonna get that extra bonus from White Fox, but she is still gonna get the attack bonus, the chain hit bonus, the ignore dodge bonus. I think that's pretty good, to be honest, but I can actually swap out Colson and see if she's faster. But uh, it's such an easy rotation. Three, five, and then four. Boom, and you proc there, and you do two, and then you do one, and then you do three. And the, the great thing that I talked about in, another, in the previous video, the sort of uh, first impressions showcase, is that you can trigger her. Her first skill, first of all, has great targeting. Ooh, I got took a massive hit there, unlucky. But uh, on top of that, on top of her first skill having great... Um, wow, I died. Some lag, I don't know. It seems like there's there's button, there's button input delay. I can't press the buttons. Let me try, you know what? We're going to try Colson instead here, but I'm shocked that she died. I think she has a very, very safe rotation. I just got unlucky where I landed just before I pressed. I swear there's something wrong with my phone. I'm pressing buttons and nothing's happening. Um, so I'm going to have to smash the screen in and see if that fixes things. But um, yeah, super safe rotation. There's just not much reason to get her if you are uh, a veteran because okay i just procced early there uh there's just not much reason to get her because of the fact that um we just don't need these characters anymore and she doesn't have the ability to be transcended or tier threeable uh so she's not gonna be able to serve shang chi as a leadership either you know because you'd rather oh, what, what, did I, what did i just do there that was the wrong rotation so th this is actually much better You can paralyze her here. Oh, I guess not. Okay. That damage is honestly not bad. But yeah, really easy rotation. Surprisingly high damage. 
Really, the only thing that's going to do damage to me here is an errant attack from uh, Proxima, or if I get unlucky and I land right on top of the tornadoes, which may be why you don't want to use the um, first skill at all because of the fact that it's going to leave you sort of in the air. Did I uh, skip? I think I skipped her. Yeah. I skipped her, her uh, spear phase because I paralyzed her. That's sick. On top of everything else, she also has the um, crowd control. Let's just do the buff. The buff is so good. I really like characters that have non-targeting skills. Like skills that don't need to be targeted. But yeah, she does this in, in less than 100 seconds. That's honestly not bad at all. That's honestly not bad at all for a tier two character to be able to do that. Let me go and grab a comparison here. I'm not gonna grab Swordmaster actually. I'm gonna grab somebody else who doesn't have a uniform. And I'm gonna show you what that means. Now this may not be the most fair comparison, but I did find another physical damage level 70 tier two character with no uniform and that is Scarlet Spider. I say unfair because he has a CTP of energy, um, but let's see how he does here. And without the sort of one-shot gimmick, you actually have a situation in which uh, his damage is actually, you know, a lot more normalized. And Katie starts to look really good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Katie's not bad when you consider that if you take away the sort of one one-shot cheese, right? He's got a heal, which is really nice that Katie doesn't have. And the damage can be a little, can fluctuate a little bit with uh, Ben Riley because of the positioning. But he also has accumulation, which uh, Katie doesn't have. And as you can see, like he's not that much faster than she is, <laughs> and he's got a CTP of energy. Keep that in mind as well, right? So yeah, we sort of forget how strong some of these characters are if they don't use the. Uh, weapon hex, sort of one one shot cheese. He's gonna end up finishing it. Okay, we do lose a little bit of time here to this uh, purple thing, but again, that's part of the character's kit that Katie has the paralysis, whereas he doesn't. Right, so you gotta you gotta count that in favor of her. So we'll add five seconds to his clear time, but this is actually the same. Wow, <laughs> he's actually one second shorter than Katie. And he has an extra buff that Katie doesn't have. Again, it's part of the character, so I'm not holding it against him. But I'm just saying that he's got the... Because he's got the spider sense passive buff, right? That we sort of uh, forget that he... Ha I, at least I forget that he has it, which is basically another one of these uh, support buffs. But then he also has a CTP of energy. Th this uh, you can definitely count against him versus Katie. Uh, because she has a regular obelisk. But yeah, so maybe he would be a little bit faster than her. But in terms of raw damage... Uh, she's actually probably ahead of him because I believe she doesn't even have all defense. She does have all defense down. No, she does have all defense down. Okay. I was going to say she doesn't, but, uh, but yeah, she, she's right. So she's about as good as Scarlet Spider. She may not actually, I think she, she is able to one shot. I've seen YouTube video thumbnails of her one shotting. So I know she can one shot like Scarlet Spider, which actually means that I should try that now. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. I think we've got it here. We're gonna start off with Nick Fury's buff. Then we're gonna do three, five, co-op, four. Oh, that was so close. Yeah, 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 that was really close. You know what, White, uh, what's her name? Uh, Weapon Hex comes in to strike for me regardless. Dang, 25 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So it's not a one shot, but I'm pretty sure she can one shot. Uh, yeah, man. She she continues to surprise me. So let me know what you guys think of Katie. It's a bit polarizing to have to cover tier two characters at this stage of Marvel Future Fight. So I kind of really want the devs to stop releasing tier two characters on their own. I know that it's a lot and it would be a really big drain on our resources on our resources to constantly pump out transcended and tier three characters when they want to release new characters but it just creates this really big chasm between what we think the character can do and what they can actually do because of you know just how much more important tier three and transcendent characters are so it, it pains me to not be able to really highlight how good katie is because my account is basically over that hump 
of tier two characters and i'm not really looking forward to or needing to utilize tier two characters at all anymore but i can tell very clearly that she's a very very good like top five free to play bio selector type characters like you know sharon rogers cersei actually way better than sharon rogers until you can pick up her uniform which you would not want to do with the rumors uh right now but you kind of get what i'm saying right she's on the level of someone like cersei she's gonna be better than scream better than scorpion and those are close you know in the top five for best free to play characters so unfortunately i can't show her off in more end game type content but i know that she's going to be very very good for you and i strongly recommend that unless your account is already doing like five nulls a day you should strongly consider building her up just because of how solid she is against you know corvus quicksilver proxima and thanos uh, and other content like that besides drx and world boss legend so yeah hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think of the data mine leaks and stuff and katie's performance and how she kind of she kind of showed up the scarless fighter uh thanks so much for watching smash the like button if you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one take care